Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com barre oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visite suprememastertv.com barra inclinada y schedule. Hamare karikram pes kiye jate hain kai bhasao mein. Kripya dekhe suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. People use different faculty to be enlightened, okay? Yes. Even sometimes practice the same method. Therefore, people have different uh, experiences in, inside. Just like you, brother and sister, and I teach you one method, but some of you have different experiences. Some, you know, have experience outside, obviously, you know, or some benefit of some kind, and some go inside, you know, see different walls, different uh, dimensions. Etc. Hmm. Please continue watching to find out more. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's episode will be presented in English and Chinese with subtitles in Arabic, Aulaxis, also known as Vietnamese, Chinese, Czech, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Russian, Spanish, Telugu, and Thai. Радостный привет, благословенные зрители! Меня зовут Света. Теплосердечный народ России предлагает вам самые искренние молитвы. Россия уже давно очарует мир своим богатым наследием и обширной географией. Собор Василия Блаженного, Красная площадь и Кремль – всего лишь несколько архитектурных чудес России. Помимо того, что самый большой город в России, Москва также является важным культурным, научным и образовательным центром в этой стране. Россия является родиной многих всемирно известных литературных и музыкальных гениев, в том числе и вегетарианского, веганского писателя и дворянина Льва Толстого, писателя Федора Достоевского, поэта и писателя Александра Пушкина, драматурга Антона Чехова и возлюбленных композиторов, как Чайковский, Михаил Глинко, и Игорь Стравинский. Это удовольствие кратко представить очаровательно красивую Россию вам, жизнерадостные зрители. Мы желаем вам найти свой собственный рай в ваших сердцах. Уже более трех десятилетий высочайший мастер Чинхай освещает наш мир своим божественным учением. Являясь полностью просветленным мастером, она передает метод медитации Гуанин, желающим немедленно открыть природу Бога внутри себя и достичь за одно время жизнь вечного освобождения из цикла трансмиграции. Метод Гуанин практиковали все просветленные мастера – такие как Будда, Конфуций, Гуру Нанак, Иисус Христос, Лао Цзэ, Господь Кришна, Господь Махавира, Пророк Мухаммад, мир да пребудет с ним и многие другие. Мастер подчеркивает, 
что если мы всегда будем помнить Бога, бескорыстно служить другим и следовать законам Вселенной, мы достигнем всего высшего потенциала в качестве людей и по-настоящему поймем все назначение на Земле. Высочайший мастер Чингай является необычайным живым примером сострадания, регулярно оказывая материальную и финансовую помощь, а также посылая любовь беженцам, бездомным, жертвам стихийных бедствий и другим нуждающимся в помощи. Высочайший мастер Чингай в качестве смиренного орудия его сострадания и любви к его драгоценным детям глубоко благодарна Богу за всю финансовую помощь, утешение и поддержку жертвам и нуждающимся и помощь всем хорошим делам на протяжении всех этих лет. Высочайший мастер Чингай почтительно благодарит все особые личности, организации, лидеров и правительства за вашу искреннюю, любящую, непрерывную поддержку. Небо благословит вас еще больше и навечно. Мы из Международной Ассоциации Высочайшего Мастера Чингай также искренне благодарны за вашу доброту в действии и желаем вам всего самого наилучшего. Высочайший Мастер Чингай получила поддержку и любовь от различных организаций, медиа, правительств и отдельных лиц, а также многочисленные награды от них, такие как премию мира Кузи 2006 года, считающуюся Нобелевской премией мира Востока, премию за мировое духовное лидерство 1994 года, премию Махавира 2008 года, дни 22 февраля и 25 октября были объявлены Днем Высочайшего Мастера Чингай, получивший почетное гражданство США. На протяжении многих лет она была отмечена многими другими премиями и почетными грамотами за свои выдающиеся благотворительные и гуманитарные деяния. Мы извиняемся за невозможность показать многие другие премии и почести вследствие нехватки места и времени. Высочайший мастер Чингай 
почтительно благодарит все особые личности, организации, лидеров и правительства за вашу искреннюю, любящую, непрерывную поддержку. Небо благослови вас еще больше и навечно. Мы из Международной ассоциации высочайшего мастера Чингай также искренне благодарны за вашу доброту в действии и желаем вам всего самого наилучшего. Будучи истинным голосом наших красивых друзей животных, высочайший мастер Чингай пропагандирует мирную и полную любви, растительную диету, предвидя безмятежный и блистательный телеганский мир, где животные и люди живут в блаженной гармонии. Ее инициативы по распространению веганского тренда включают в себя распространение листовок, жизненная альтернатива, международные веганские рестораны, Лавенгат, фирмы веганской еды и продуктов из веганского меха, Supreme Master Television, а также регулярное общение с влиятельными политиками и медийными лидерами и участие в транслируемых по телевидению конференциях по изменению климата и прочее. Знаем мы об этом или нет, ее усилия оказали огромное влияние на глобальную осведомленность о дружественном по отношению к животным, образе жизни и о том, как они могут принести прочный мир между странами и спасти нашу планету от изменения климата и природных бедствий. На протяжении лет Высочайший мастер Чинхай объехал весь мир от Америки до Африки, от Европы до Океании, провела сотни бесед с общественностью и своими учениками на целый ряд духовных тем. Сегодня мы благословенны представить вам одну из этих мудрых лекций под названием «Сурангама Сутра. 25 средств к просветлению. Сессия вторая. Часть вторая из шести на между мастером и учениками, данная на английском и китайском 5 апреля 2019 года. Тайвань, также известная как Формоза. Now, let's go yesterday again. I told you the calendar is always pops up by itself. <laughs> We should really thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who have taken time to record the Buddha's teaching after the masters and Nirvana. And also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. According to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten directions, all respectfully before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk or, you know, beautiful cloth and I just make it more popular. Yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say, if I've done something wrong, according to the tradition, my heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me, at least Other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes.
So yesterday we said that uh, the physician king and superior physician say that the Buddha asked them about, you know, as the assembly about perfect penetration for them. As we have been certified, the cause of flavors is the superior means. But as I have told you already, they were attending to the Buddha personally. Therefore, the Buddha was blessing them immensely, being so near. Maybe they have to touch the Buddha pose, or listen to the chairs. In the, in the old time, they don't have this uh, stethoscope. They just put their ears right <laughs> on your chest and listen. How more near? How nearer can it be? Okay? Therefore, they probably soon out physically. And their astral body just flow up to heaven. Therefore, the flavors at that time they tasted is not the same as the normal flavors that they taste with the ordinary uh, medicine for other patients. Yeah. But then because of that, you know, they thought, oh, it is the flavors that give me awakening. And the Buddha even certified to it. So for us, the flavor is very, very important for enlightenment. He even says superior. So they become enlightened by means of flavors. That's what they say. But don't try. Don't go pharmacy and taste everything. Huh? <laughs> will you get enlightened then? <laughs> the pharmacist will call police. <laughs> ah, there's a lunar people. <laughs> a lunatic people coming to my drugstore. I'm making trouble here. And then you say, no, no, I'm just tasting. I want to be enlightened. <laughs> now, there is another one coming up now. His name is Bhadrapala. Huh? And another 16 awakened lords who were his companions arose from their seats and bowed at the Buddha's feet. He said to the Buddha, we first heard the Dharma and left the home life under king of awesome Sao Buddha. Once, when it was time for the Shangha to bathe, I followed the custom and entered the bathhouse. Suddenly I awakened to the fact that water does not wash away the dust, nor does it cleanse the body. At that point, between the two, I became peaceful and I attained the state of there being nothing at all. Perhaps emptiness, they call it. To this day, I have never forgotten that past experience. Having left home with the Buddha, I have gone beyond learning. That Buddha named me Bhadrapala. Wonderful touch was revealed, and I accomplished the position of the Buddha's disciple. The Buddha, I mean, uh, Shakyamuni Buddha now, uh, the world honor one, asked about perfect penetration, as I have been certified to it. Touch is the superior means. So that's his uh, meditation method, touch. I don't know what touched him, didn't say here. Probably from the water, or when they were bathing together, and they're bathing, you know, and they have to cleanse themselves. And then suddenly he realized, through the touch, that it's not the water that cleans. But of course he has transcended the normal state of awareness then, yeah? Otherwise he... If you touch yourself all day long, you feel nothing, no? Do you feel anything when you touch yourself? Or even your brother next to you touch you? Try it. Touch anything. <laughs> I won't feel anything. <laughs> yes. Therefore, actually, if you want to read the sutras of the Buddhas or the scriptures of any religious order, you must be enlightened first. Yes, you must have more or less similar experience, yeah, of transcendental awareness. Otherwise, people, what? Just a smell of herbs and he became enlightened? 
Then I go smell the herbs all day long. Then I get enlightened quicker. He, he, he only <laughs> take care of the Buddha once and the herbs at that time only, at one time, and he get enlightenment. And this one is a touch. Did you see that anybody touch him here? He, uh, yeah, he went to the bathhouse also. Suddenly I awakened to the fact that water does not wash away the dust, nor does it cleanse the body. Okay, between the two, he entered the state of not because of the water or not because of the touch, and then he realized that. If he's in the bathhouse, I'm sure he was scrubbing himself, you know, trying to cleanse himself, and that's how he became enlightened. So he thought it was the touch, uh, the touch of the body, of the sensation that he awakened. <laughs> it's not. It's just like everything else before us. So now we know. So that's another one, number five, huh? We still have uh, 15 or something to go. <laughs> now, this is another Buddha great disciple, Maha Kashipa. He will be one of Buddha's uh, successor later on. Huh? And you should know that, even though it doesn't mention here. Okay, but I, I read elsewhere, uh, it's different. So Maha Kashipa is one of uh, Buddha's great disciples. And then another nun called Purple Golden Light Bichuni. I explained to you yesterday already, Bichuni means nun, but fully precepted nun. Bichu is fully precepted, 250 precepts. Yes, if the novice, then we don't call them Bichuni. Yeah, we call them maybe Samini. <laughs> Sami or Samini, yeah. Sami means a young boy, a new, new novice to come to become prepared to be a monk. It takes some time. And then uh, Samini is a woman, a yeah, lady nun, yeah, but not yet fully ordained. Yeah. Uh, these are all uh, Bichu. Bichu and Bichuni. Yeah, okay. Uh, I was also I'm supposed to be Bichuni, but don't look at me, don't question. <laughs> I'm not that kind of bichuni. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> Maybe inside, eh? the heart. But people don't look at inside. They mostly look at outside. They say, what? What? You say you are a nun? Oh, forget it. If you are a nun, then I'm a monk. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody would say that. <laughs> okay, never mind. <sighs> it's just the way it arranged with the uh, Maya, so that some people have to be screened out to begin with. Okay, I'm not allowed to just take in anybody the way I want. So the clothes is some kind of a screening filter. <laughs> it's just like you have a screen door, screen window. Feel the out the small mosquitoes. Hmm? This kind of screening, <laughs> the screen door. Might as well, yeah. Because even some people already came, and still cannot uh, distinguish. Not to talk about people who did not even want to come <laughs> because of the screen. <laughs> mosquitoes don't come because of the screen anyway. So. Mahakajipa and Purple Golden Light Bichuni and others, maybe some more, uh, probably practicing the same method. Therefore, they all came together to tell the Buddha what they did or what they do. So they all arose from their seats, bow at the Buddha's feet, and say it to the Buddha. In the past, Kalpa, in this region, I drew near to the Buddha named Sun Moon Lam, who was then in the world. I heard Dharma from him and cultivated and studied with him. After that Buddha's extinction, I made offerings to his sarira and lit lamps to continue his light. Do you know what sarira is? 
No, okay, I tell you. When some saintly people die, or in case this Buddha, any Buddha die, they will burn his body as a custom in India. And then whatever left over, uh, solid substance, they will put it in a stupa. They build like a small temple uh, and put the sarira in there. Yeah. Sarira means the uh, leftover from the Buddha's cremation of saintly people. Mostly they call it sarira. Okay? Well, most of the Buddha's sarira has become very beautiful. Mm. It's not like ordinary people after burned, not much left, or just ash, or just some little crumbs of bones. Buddha's body condensed into some kind of jewel, seven color of jewel. You know, it's like, imagine it's, okay, do you know moonstone? Yes. Yeah. You know crystal? Yes. It is so clear between the moonstone and the crystal. Some clearer, some not. And it's about this big. Uh, bigger than my thumb, uh, two thumb together, <laughs> about this big, okay, and round, and very beautiful color. People would put it in this kind of small uh, stupa, they call it, yeah. It's like a mini shrine, shrine. and mostly it's like triangle, yeah, and decorated, carved, Scrubbed beautifully outside, and inside they put the sharida. It's a relic. A relic, yes, a relic, that's correct. Yes. You Indian? Nepal. Uh, Nepal, similar, that's why they know a lot about it. All right then. So um, these two groups, the Badrapala group, and other 16 uh, retinue people, and also this group of Mahakajipa and Purple Golden Light Bishuni and others, they are retinues. They normally have their group, you know, like he's a group leader. They have practiced already in the past, as you can hear that already, yeah? Are you okay? Your eyes are red. You didn't sleep well? No, I'm very happy. You were happy and you crying? Why are you crying? Pure tears of joy. Truthfully, I'm so happy. We are all so blessed. You're happy? So happy, blessed, spoiled. We really love you so much. Of course, really I'm grateful. your babysitter. I sit here. <laughs> <laughs> and you feel safe and, of course, somebody take care of you. But you also, you go beyond what's necessary, Master. And I can't hear you at all. <laughs> what? You go beyond what's necessary, Master, and ah, it's just really so Beyond touching. the duty, you mean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So this like is my now. duty. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you're happy. Okay. You just like fans, you know. That's all. I don't know. Like uh, those uh, famous movie star and uh, singers. If they sit with you, let you come to their house. Of course, you're happy, huh? You're, even you're not coming to their house at all. You're not allowed to. You just stay in a big open air theater somewhere and you already hura 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 oh, oh. <laughs> and here I let you in my house and entertain you every day if you're not happy then you must be crazy <laughs> I can understand that yeah no I just I guess it's different I hope it's different I hope you're not just my fans <laughs> Oh, whatever. Yes, I do what I can. I thought you didn't sleep well, your eyes red. <laughs> so they practiced before, you see, in the past Kalpa, also in the same region where the Buddha Shakyamuni was at that time. They were practicing with the Sun Moon Lam Buddha, who was then in the world. At that time he was in the world. I heard Dharma from him and cultivated, you know, and studied with him, etc., etc. And then after the Buddha uh, Nirvana, she made offering to Sarira, and he lit lamps to continue his light. Maybe she may, maybe lighting lamps, normal lamps to offer to the Buddha, or maybe she meant that she continued to teach people because 
She said she lit the lamps to continue his light. So I guess that she was kind of continue his teaching lineage. Yeah. Otherwise, the normal light cannot be Buddha's light, na? That's what I guess. Okay. From that time on, life after life, my body has always been perfect, and has shone with a purple golden light. The big shuni. Purple, golden light, and others make up my retinue, and we all brought forth the resolve for body at the same time. So that was their story. Yeah. She continued. I contemplated the world's six sense objects, change and decay. They are but empty stillness. Based on this, I cultivated. Extinction. Now my body and mind can pass through hundreds of thousands of cow paths as though they were a finger snap. Finger snap. Wow. Meaning time has no uh, control power over this bichuni and her retinue. So that was the talk from uh, Mahakasipa. Introducing also purple golden light bichuni, at the same time, also telling the Buddha what practice he has been doing. There was in the past cow pass, and imagine they remember everything from the past cow pass. You remember anything from yesterday? <laughs> what did you eat yesterday? <laughs> Not even that. Yeah. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Your memory is <laughs> extraordinary. Extraordinarily low. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what they do. You see. So based on the emptiness of mental constructs, I accomplished a hardship. The world honor one says in the Shakyamuni Buddha, because they stop from one Buddha to another. So I have to tell you which Buddha that they were saying. Before there was his uh, past Buddha master, and now he talk about Shikamuni Buddha. So the word honor one says that I am foremost in dutta practices. Wonderful Dharma brought me awakening and understanding, and I extinguish all our flaws. The Buddha asked about perfect penetration, as I have been certified to it. Mental constructs are. The superior means. What is mental constructs? Anybody can explain to me? Philosophy. Oh, he been telling you all this, and now you don't even know what mental constructs are. Hmm? What then? No, don't know. Oh, okay. You pretend again. <laughs> Make trouble for me. Then I don't have to explain. Just. No mental constructs. That's what it is. <laughs> Actually, because they have nothing to do with us anymore. No, nah? we could also read through to see how many methods the Buddhas, monks and nuns have been practicing all that time. Mm. He said that he contemplated the world's six sense objects, huh? that they change and they decay. So they are just empty. Based on that, you see, he cultivated extinction. So now his body and mind can pass through hundreds of thousands of cow paths as though they were a finger snap. Mm. Don't know. What if I say I also don't know? Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that mean? He's using his intellect, his mental power to observe the six senses. You see that we know: touch, smell, taste. What else? What else? The six senses. <laughs> okay. So he's using his. Uh, Intellectual power, mental power to analyze this, and it's also a kind of uh, contemplation. No, 
concentration. Mm. Thus, he became enlightened. Yeah. People use different faculty to be enlightened. Okay? Yes. Even sometimes practice the same method. Therefore, people have different uh, experiences in, inside. Just like you, brother and sister, and I teach you one method, but some of you have different experiences. Some, you know, have experience outside, obviously, you know, or some benefit of some kind, and some go inside, you know, see different worlds, different uh, dimensions, huh? etc. Hmm. So this is what he did huh? in order to get enlightenment. Therefore, he said to the Buddha, mental constructs are the superior means because he think or the six sense object would be deteriorated some day or another, but the mental capacity would still remain. Yeah. Therefore, he said that his body and mind, mind is belonging to the mental domain, yeah? so he say he still have it, and his mind can pass through hundreds of thousands of kalpa, as if with a finger snap. Hmm? All right. So he thinks if you use the mental power, the mind power, then you can be enlightened. Just be more observant, more concentrating, using the mind. Our method don't use the mind, except just uh, to repeat uh, some protective kind of phrases. Yeah? That's what we have to use. Otherwise, it's not the mind that we use to observe or to analyze anything. You see? He did observe the sixth sense object, you know? and then he see that they are not um, permanent, not lasting. It's just the mind. Even the sixth sense object, he observed that they are all come, go, come, go, but his mind is still alert, still can see that. That means he thinks he used the mind to see things, <laughs> to know things. Восхитительные зрители, мы ценим вашу компанию на сегодняшнем эпизоде под названием «Сурангама Сутра. 25 средств к просветлению. Сессия 2, часть 2 из 6 на между мастером и учениками». Далее следует выборка из священного конфуцианского аналекта, глава 15, часть 1 из 2, на словах мудрости сразу после важных новостей. Оставайтесь на Supreme Master Television для позитивных программ. Пусть ваша благородная жизнь расцветает с любовью, принося красоту и добро в наш мир. Admirable viewers, we appreciate your company for today's episode entitled The Surangama Sutra. 25 Means to Enlightenment, Session 2, Part 2 of 6 on Between Master and Disciples. Coming up next is Selection from the Secret Confucian Analects, Chapter 15, Part 1 of 2 on Words of Wisdom, right after Note for the News. Please stay attuned to Supreme Master Television for more positive programming. May your noble lives blossom with love, bringing beauty and goodness to our world. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD.